Hey guys, Mike here from Lunch Money Comics. It's that time of the summer again, and I am back in Brimfield, Massachusetts, the largest outdoor flea market in America, and I made a beeline for the truck full of comic books. Let's see if we can find something good. Is this Blue? Hi, Blue. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> so this is the man with the truck himself. Jeff, how you doing, man? Good to how see you. How you doing? Mikey, how you doing? Good. So uh, you have a new truck full of stuff? Yeah, this is all fresh comics. Nobody's seen any of this. This is all fresh out of my collection, out of my warehouse. All right. I might be in there for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Have fun. Thanks. Hey. All new stuff, huh? That staple is pulled through. Bummer. I think this is first appearance of the Daughters of the Dragon. First Rocketeer, sweet. Climb up into this truck here. Do it, Mikey. Do it. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Oh man, how much time do I got? And a reminder, guys, these prices are definitely not, you know, what they sell at. It's a cool car. I 
I have, yeah, I have, uh, I, mean, I have all of it. I have all of less school and, you know, like number one spawn, I have like 600 of them. I mean, why do I need 600 of them? I don't, but I have a whole bunch of uh, spawn one newsstand. Yes. Well, that's cool. She actually has the ticket in there. Huh, that's, that's neat. That's first boom boom. It's always been a cool comic book. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I just got these out of this estate that I cleaned out. Yeah, I, I tried to take all the ones that were ID to the scene. All right, Jeff. Hey, man. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. There you go. No, I'll be back. All you right. That. <laughs> take it easy. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. So I was in that truck for a while, guys, and I feel like I still didn't scratch the surface, but I ended up with a pretty great stack of comic books, and Jeff definitely took care of me, and I got a great deal for all of them. Uh, but that's actually it for me today. I have a real job to go to, and I'm definitely going to have to come back to Brimfield later this week and do some more hunting, but for now, let's go home, and I'll show you guys what I got. So there you go, guys. That was my first day, or at least the first hour, at the summer session of the Brimfield Flea Market. It's one of the largest flea markets in the world. It comes to town three times a year, spring, summer, and fall, for a week each time. And I always go for at least two days. It's just too big to explore it all at once. However, on that day you saw opening day of that summer show, I didn't have much time. Like I said, I have a regular job and I had a lot going on that day. So I had about an hour and if I only had an hour, I was going to spend it in the best way possible by going directly to Jeff from Michigan and his truck full of comic books. Now I first met Jeff at the spring session of the Brimfield Flea Market uh, and that's the first time I met him and saw this truck full of comic books and come to find out that he bought a comic book store years ago. He has a warehouse full of this stuff and every time there's a big flea market, he loads up the truck and drives all the way out here to Massachusetts. So uh, when I met him, I got some fantastic deals uh, from him last time. Definitely check out that video if you haven't seen it yet. But because of that, because I mentioned it on my channel, a ton of people contacted me asking, who is this guy? When is he coming back to Massachusetts? Or more importantly, if people were in the Michigan or the Great Lakes region area, everyone wanted to know his phone number. I was reluctant to share the number directly on the channel, but I told people to contact me, I'd let them know. I got like a hundred emails about it. So I knew that people would be searching this guy out when he came back to Brimfield, which is why I wanted to go opening day, first thing in the morning to try to hunt through that truck before it got picked through before the end of the week. So I ended up with uh, actually only six books, but they're pretty cool and I got a fantastic deal for them. Um, and I can tell you guys with the power of hindsight that um, I did go back. I'm actually filming this a couple days after that footage you saw. I ended up going back to Brimfield, seeing the whole show a couple days later 
Uh, I got comic books from everywhere else, but of course I also went back to Jeff's truck. So some of the books you saw me miss in that footage, I definitely picked up the second time. But Jeff told me, and I warned him, uh, he told me to share his phone number right here on the channel. So I'm gonna hold up the card. I'm not gonna cover the phone number this time like I did last time. There it is right there. You can pause the, the uh, footage if you want. Uh, I don't wanna put this down in the description just because of bots and things like that. So there it is. If you wanna contact Jeff's Antiques uh, from Michigan, um, there you go. You can give him a call. And uh, if you don't get a hold of him in Michigan, just know he's probably coming back to the fall show uh, when it comes back to Brimfield, Massachusetts. So all that being said, guys, before I show you the books that I got, you know the drill. If you want to support the channel and you like this sort of stuff, head on down, hit the like button, leave me a comment. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, you can follow me on Instagram under Lunch Money Comics IG. So I want to start going through these in order of sort of like the least valuable to the most valuable, although that's going to be sort of hard to do because not all of these were priced. And even if they were priced, Jeff gave me a package deal for all of them. So it's kind of difficult to say what I paid for them. But I think everyone can agree that this first book is not one that's usually on comic collector's radar. And it's this. This is Secret Wars 2, number five. It's from 1985, written by Jim Shooter, art by Al Milgram. And uh, what is this? Well, Secret Wars 2 was a sequel to the original Secret Wars that was uh, published between 1984 and 1985. And a lot of people can agree that Secret Wars, the first one, was mostly just made to like sell toys. Uh, and the story wasn't that good. It was still pretty, uh, you know, a seminal event. It had a lot of impacts long term in Marvel Comics. But Secret Wars 2 was an attempt to sort of like recapture, uh, you know, the success of the first one. And it was pretty widely panned. Most people think that this is a terrible story. Um, and this is just number five issue of the nine issue series. Why do I care about this book? Well, it's because in this issue specifically, it's the first appearance of Tabitha Smith, a.k.a. Boom Boom. Boom Boom is a mutant with the power to uh, make spheres that blow things up. She had lots of other weird superhero na names uh, slightly better than Boom Boom over the years. But the reason why I wanted her first appearance is because she's a mutant. I collect first appearances of mutants and those that are in X-Men and affiliated teams. And Boom Boom was a longtime member of X-Force under Cable. Um, so for that reason, more than anything else, I had to have her first appearance. And it just happens to be Secret Wars 2 number five so yep happy to pick this one up kind of a silly book sort of a throw in but definitely a good addition to my first appearance mutant collection so this next comic book is a pretty cool one and i found it pretty much immediately when i got there however you didn't see it in the footage because the moment i pulled it out of the box that dog you saw blue awesome dog started barking at another dog and it was just too noisy i had to cut the footage but trust me i found this pretty much right away and i'm happy i did because it's this. This is Black Widow Pale Little Spider number one from 2002. And this is the first issue of the first solo series featuring Yelena Belova's Black Widow, AKA White Widow. Now, most people know who Yelena Belova is because she's played by Florence Pugh in the MCU. But uh, in the comic book, she's become a pretty cool character in her own right. Her first appearance was in Inhumans number five from 1999, but this is the first storyline that she carried all on her own. And uh, yeah, you can see it was published under Marvel's Max imprint, sort of like for more adult content. You see right here, they have the parental advisory right on the cover. I think the idea of these is to like discourage kids from buying this comic book, but if you throw explicit content on a comic book, it's gonna make a kid want it more, right? Still, really cool comic book, excellent cover. And um, yeah, I got it for a fantastic price. Very happy to add it to the collection. So recently on my channel, I talked about how much I liked The Rocketeer. I loved that movie as a kid. It made a big impression on me. But I only found out years later that The Rocketeer is based off of a comic book character created by Dave Stevens in the early 80s. I recently tracked down his third appearance, which is the first comic book he appears on the cover with the title The Rocketeer. But I still wanted the first appearance. So I was delighted only weeks later to find this in Jeff's long boxes. This is Star Slayer number two from 1982. And uh, you don't see the Rocketeer anywhere on the cover. Well, that's because there are multiple stories in this comic book. He appears in the latter half, uh, written by Dave Stevens, fantastic art by him. And uh, yeah, it's a really cool story that basically echoes exactly the beginning of the movie, if you've seen it. But even though he doesn't appear on the cover, he appears in full on the back. I'll put a picture right here. Really cool comic book. Really happy to track this one down. I also got this one for a fantastic price. 
So next up, we have an amazing Spider-Man comic book. Now, I've wanted this comic book for a while, but I didn't want to spend a lot of money on it. So I always said if I could find a good copy for a cheap price, of course I'd pick it up. And as fate would have it, Jeff had multiple copies in those long boxes. Uh, I took the best condition one, and I got it. Here it is. This is The Amazing Spider-Man number 265 from 1985. And the claim to fame here is that this is the first appearance of the character Silver Sable. Silver Sable is sort of an anti-hero, mercenary, sometimes a good guy, sometimes a bad guy, often runs afoul of Spider-Man, but is also a sometimes ally. Um, and why did I want this book for a long time? Well, for those of you who watch my channel a lot, you might have seen this coming. I like to collect the first appearances of characters in these old Marvel trading cards. And here we have Silver Sable right here, first appearance. Amazing Spider-Man number 265. So I had to have this book. And like I said, this book can go for a little bit of money. And um, yeah, Jeff had a great price on it. Um, and uh, if you stay tuned to the next Brimfield video I do, you may very well see another copy of this book. So next up, we have something I think is really interesting, but it's not a comic book. It's actually a pulp magazine. You saw it in the footage, and it's this. This is Weird Tales from March 1948. Now, why did I want this? Well, I've recently talked to my channel, uh, quite a few times actually, how much I like H.P. Lovecraft, the horror writer from Rhode Island that basically went on to spawn an entire mythos of creepy things. I am a big fan, and a lot of his early work was published in these pulp magazines, specifically this title, Weird Tales. And I've been on the lookout for Weird Tales simply for H.P. Lovecraft. Now, these magazines published lots of science fiction and horror stories, and there were a lot of famous authors that contributed to them, including someone like Ray Bradbury. You see right here his name on the cover. He's one of the, you know, godfathers of, you know, modern science fiction. He wrote a lot about, like, dystopian futures. He wrote the story Fahrenheit 451. So I was excited to see Ray Bradbury on this, but I was much more excited to see right at the top, you see... Lovecraft. So I got excited that I found a Weird Tales with some original Lovecraft story. I was slightly disappointed to find out he didn't contribute a story to this. He contributed a poem called The House. Now, Lovecraft didn't always do horror. I was worried that, you know, this poem was about like a nice house. But I was very happy to find out that it's a creepy poem about a creepy house. <laughs> so I was really happy to pick this up. Um, it was listed at $15, which uh, for the condition of this, I think is absolutely worth it, uh, regardless of the deal that Jeff gave me. Pulps, everyone knows, notoriously fall apart. The paper quality is terrible. It's pulp paper. This is actually in really good shape. So I was ecstatic to find some original HP Lovecraft uh, published material in a cool pulp magazine. Very happy to pick this one up. So I was absolutely thrilled to find this last book. Um, I've often talked about how I have a wish list of comic books on my phone. This book has been on that list for as long as I can remember. And once again, it's not a traditional comic book. It's this. This is The Deadly Hands of Kung Fu number 32 from 1977. And you'll notice it's a larger format. That's because this series, The Deadly Hands of Kung Fu, were basically martial arts comic books published in the mid-70s by a company called Magazine Management, which was a corporate sibling to Marvel Comics. And because of that, the stories featured in here featured a lot of Marvel characters that do martial arts, like Iron Fist and Shang-Chi and White Tiger, who actually had their first appearance in this comic book. They even had a special Bruce Lee edition of this, and Bruce Lee is basically a real-life superhero. But the reason why I wanted issue number 32 is because this one here is the first appearance of the Daughters of the Dragon. The Daughters of the Dragon are a two-woman superhero team consisting of Misty Knight and Colleen Wing. And if you watched any of the Netflix Marvel series, you should know exactly who those characters are because they were two of the best characters in those shows, especially Iron Fist, which was not a very good show, but Colleen Wing was absolutely the best part of it. Now, both of those characters had their first appearances before this, but this is the first time you see them team up as the Daughters of the Dragon, and they've gone on to become a pretty cool duo in their own right and have their own comic book series. Uh, but one of the coolest things about this book is that the story involving them was written by Chris Claremont, my favorite comic book writer of all time uh, of X-Men fame. So fun little bonus there. I've almost bought this book several times on eBay for like $35, $40. I sort of always held out that I would find it cheaper somewhere. And there it was in Jeff's long boxes, you know, it's a larger format, so he didn't have it in a bag and board, but it's actually in pretty great shape. So I was thrilled to find this book finally, uh, and it's just got a great look to it anyways, guys. So um, if you haven't checked out these Deadly Hands of Kung Fu magazines, these larger format comic books, you definitely should. There's some really good sort of key issues in there, but they're also just really 
fun to read. The art is fantastic, especially if you like martial arts and kung fu. Definitely a series you should check out. So there you go, guys. Uh, I only ended up with six books, but I haven't told you what I paid for them yet. So I said Jeff hooked me up. Well, he sold all of these to me for $50. Obviously, that's a great deal. I've almost spent that much just on this Deadly Hands of Kung Fu. So uh, thank you so much, Jeff, for giving me such a great deal. And like I told you guys, I went back a few days later, and let's just say I got a few more books out of that truck. I'm looking at the stack right now. It's a lot of books. So you're definitely going to want to stay tuned for that next one. Uh, but head on down to the comments and let me know which of these pickups you like the best. And in the meantime, I hope you keep hunting for comic books in strange and unusual places as well. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.